All right, guys, welcome to week seven of distance learning. I hope you guys all had an enjoyable, restful weekend and maybe even got to go outside and enjoy some of the snow. Probably wasn't enough snow to go snowmobiling or build a snowman or do some of the stuff that we like to do in January, February, but it was a little nice change of pace for me at least. And I hope you guys enjoyed that and maybe had some fun um, celebrating Mother's Day with your family yesterday um, or on Sunday, whenever you're watching this. So um, with that, we're going to dive in here to week seven. It's hard to believe that the school year is almost over. Um, I know that you guys have been real troopers during distance learning, but know that I'm still here as a resource to help you um, as we finish out the school year and end of the summer. If you need anything, feel free to email or Zoom call me and I'm, I'm more than happy to assist you and help with anything that you need or even if you just want to chat I know a couple of you have taken me up on that and it's been a lot of fun hearing what you guys have been up to um, and making the most of these unusual and challenging times so um, I'm really excited about this week's real life with Ramstead because I like to eat I know a lot of you guys like to eat too um, and my one of my favorite food groups is actually proteins I really love meat and I love eating steaks and chicken and all of that stuff so this week we're going to talk a little bit about how to pick up the best steak at the grocery store and that's done through grading meat meats and evaluating meats. Okay. So we're going to talk about that. And then you guys are actually going to have the opportunity to practice grading meat and putting them in order from best to worst. So um, buckle up. It's going to be a great time of learning here today, folks. Okay. So some of you guys might be confused what I'm talking about when I say grading meat. Well, Mr. Ramson, aren't we graded as students? Well, yes, but our meats are also graded as well by the United States Department of Agriculture, or the USDA. And they grade or evaluate meat on a variety of different factors, and there's two different ways that they're graded, okay? Yield grade can be done, and quality grade can be done. Yield grade is a more quantitative or numeric value assigned to um, a meat cut, and quality grade is generally a little bit more qualitative. So what um, is taken based off of the amount of marbling or intermuscular fat, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and the maturity of the animal. There isn't really any mathematical formula to it. It's based off of looks. Okay, so we decide to grade meats or evaluate meats so that we are better able to predict the economic value and quality of enjoyment of our meat products. Okay, so when do we grade meat? Meat is actually inspected and evaluated and graded by the United States Department of Agriculture or different um, inspection facilities before it even reaches the grocery store. Okay, what you decide to do or not do with your steak when you get home does not affect the grade. If we look at the picture or the meme I included up here on the slide, y'all argue with the people who eat steaks like this. Well, you can't. They're still chewing. All right, this very well could have been a prime cut of meat, but they... <laughs> slaughtered it. They didn't do a very nice job cooking, at least in my opinion. I think that the best way to cook it is medium or medium rare. Although we all have our different tastes and values and opinions, a big common misconception is meat is not grated at the, at the restaurant or in our homes. It's graded beforehand. So what we choose to do or how, how good or not so good we choose to cook it doesn't really affect the grade. So grading is done before the store. Okay. So comparing, contrasting, uh, yield grade and quality grade. So yield grade is quantitative, as I said, it's numeric value derived from um, a complex formula that considers the ribeye area, so how much red meat is on the actual um, carcass, uh, the fat thickness, the KPH, or the kidney pelvic heart fat, and also the hot carcass weight, so how much that actual carcass weighs, okay? This is essentially used for identifying the cattle for differences in yields of boneless, closely trimmed retail cuts. And these cuts are from the loin, rib, chuck, and round. And these are all different parts of the cattle that are cut up once they are harvested and used for cuts that we enjoy. Okay. Quality grade, on the other hand, is what we're going to be focusing on today. This is qualitative. Okay. This predicts the palatability or tastiness of the meat. And it's derived from a marbling score and maturity. So marbling score is the amount of intermuscular fat that we have in our steaks. Okay. So I'm not talking about that ugly looking clear once we cook it fat tissue that surrounds our steak. That's not necessarily good. That's fat tissue. What we do like are those little white streaks in our red meat. That is little pockets of fat which allow our meat to be nice and juicy. 
Okay. The second factor for quality grade is the maturity of the animal. So um, maturity is essentially the estimation of the chronological, chronological age of the animal. So generally speaking, we want to harvest animals once they've reached their productive life and not too much after because as they get more and more mature, their muscles or the meat, because the meat is muscles, that's what we eat, Okay, um, it's going to get stiffer and tougher and it's going to start to turn a little bit brown, not as appetizing as a nice juicy red looking steak. Okay, So this chart, don't memorize it by any means, but this is how quality grade is determined. So again, we have our maturity on the top. We can assign an A through E and A means that the animal is between 9 and 30 months of age. Okay, So the younger it is the higher maturity rating it's going to have. And then degrees of marbling is how much marbling or intermuscular fat that we have. And we'll see a picture of that here in the next slide. So we want to have an abundance of um, intermuscular fat or marbling because that makes our steaks nice and juicy. So as we go down on the amount of marbling, our grade um, quality grade goes down. So prime is obviously the best type of meat that we can have or the best cut we can have. It is um, earned by having a um, not as mature animal or more fresh animal with an abundant amount of marbling. So that is what's going to create, that's the recipe for the juiciest, most delicious steak, as long as you don't burn it, of course. That's another lecture for a different day. Okay, so there are a lot of different factors that influence the quality grade that we get for our steaks. Some of these factors include high marbling, uh, low fat and more trimmed, brighter color, less bone, and more muscling or meat. Okay, so high marbling, as we can see in this picture over here on the left, this is a prime cut, okay? We see a lot of marbling, those little white streaks, okay? Over here, see where my mouse is right now? This is just fat tissue. That is not marbling, okay? Not the most desirable thing to have on your steak because if you're anything like me, if you've taken a bite of a steak before and you got a weird pocket of fat, it kind of turns you off a little bit. It's not as tasty. It feels weird in your mouth, okay? We don't want to have a lot of fat pockets, okay? We want those to be trimmed and lean, okay? A brighter color is also good. All three of these have a pretty nice color, um, but... Bright cherry red is the nice color that we look for on a, assigning a good quality grade. Less bone is also good because if we have more bone, that means we're going to probably have less muscle. And muscle is what we eat. We don't eat bones. We're not dogs. Okay, so the more meat we have, the better. And the less bone we have, the better. And obviously, that goes into the last point. The more muscling we have, the more red meat we have, the better. And obviously, we want that meat to be high quality. We want it to be bright. We want there to be little streaks of intermuscular fat or marbling. Um, but the more we can get on a cut, the better. So we can assign prime, choice, select, standard, utility, or cutter grades. And this is from best to worst. So prime is the best, cutter is the worst. And choice and select, though, are generally going to be the two grades that you see most commonly at the grocery store. If you go to a fancy restaurant or you decide to go to a fancy butcher shop, they may offer you prime um, cuts of meat at a higher rate. But most of us, the, the standard steaks that we have in our freezer or fridge at home is going to be standard or utility, or, or excuse me, um, choice or select. So again, here's another image comparing and contrasting the different types of abundancy for uh, marbling. So again, we want good marbling, lots and lots of marbling. That makes our steaks juicy. Juicy steaks are good, right? Okay, so prime is over here. Select is over here, okay? So now on the next slide, I'm going to have a lot of different classes. I have four different classes for us today, and a class is a set of four of anything. So it could be four landscape designs, four cows, four pencils, whatever you want. But here we're going to have a class of um, class of meat or steaks. Okay. So there's going to be four images of steaks on the screen and you're going to rank them from best to worst. And each steak is going to have a number, one, two, three, or four. And you're going to rank them or rearrange those numbers from best to worst. So for example, if you think steak two is the best, three is the second best, fourth is the third best, and one is the worst, your final ranking for me would be two, three, four, one. Does that make sense? Okay, so don't worry about assigning quality grades. I went over that just so you understood the factors that you want to think about when you're evaluating a class of steaks. But um, the first three classes we are going to do together. So you kind of get a feel for how this works. And the last one is going to be what you punch into Google Classroom for your check-in for the week. Okay, so that last class, I'm just going to have you do it and turn it in on Google Classroom. And if you happen to be right, you'll get some extra credit for the week. So it's a win-win. So you might as well try it out and do your best. Okay. 
Um, let's do a couple for practice. All right, so here we have our first class of stakes. So it's one, two, three, and four. So you can see the labels I wrote on markers up there. Okay, so remember the things we look for. We want to have lots of red meat, but we want the meat to have nice little streaks of white, which is the marbling. Okay, we don't want to have a lot of excess fat along the sides. We want it to be a trim, lean cut of meat. We don't want there to be an abundance of bone. We want to see as much red, fleshy meat as we possibly can. And I'm pretty sure those are the main things that we're looking for. Oh, and obviously, to a bright red cherry color. Okay. So knowing this, why don't you hit pause, and then we'll go over the final placing for this. Okay. So now that you've had some time to think about your placing for this class, I would go out and say that I would rank it one, two, three, and four, just like we see on the screen here. One is at the top of the class because it's very trim, right? Very nice to look at. There's not a whole lot of fat on the outside, and there's also not a ton of bone. There's some of the other steaks in here have a lot of bone, right? So we want to have minimal bone. It's a bright red color, and we have nice pockets of marbling. So it's going to be a really nice... Um, steak to cook out on the grill. Two is still in the top half of the class or the top pair of the class because there's a lot of red meat tissue that's present. It's not as marbled as the first steak in here, but it also has a lot more fat along the sides. It's not as trim or lean of a cut. So two slides beneath one for this class. Three is at the top of the bottom pair, third in the class today, simply because look at how much bone is over here, right? We don't have as much red, juicy meat present because there's so much bone obstructing, okay? And four is at the bottom of the class today because it has a lot of bone, but also has a lot of fat tissue along the sides. It's not a very trim cut. Therefore, we place the class of steaks one, two, three, four, all right? Now, practice this one again. Hit pause, and then we'll reconvene and see how you did. All right. I would place this class two, four, three, one. Two and four are pretty close calls. It's kind of tough for me to make that, but the key distinguishing factor here is look how much more red meat is present on steak number two. There's a lot more to see there. There's going to be a lot more meat for us to enjoy when we grill out that steak as opposed to four. However, I do argue that four looks a lot nicer and was more aesthetically pleasing overall. Um, and it does have kind of more uniform uh, marbling pockets. However, um, like I said, there's not as much meat on number four, so it cannot be at the top of the class here today. Then I would go three beneath four simply because there isn't as much marbling as we see in uh, steak number four. However, it is better than one in that it is a little bit more of a bright, more fresh color, which means that it's probably going to be a little bit more of a fresh steak. The number one, because look, we have this really dark pocket of brownish gray up there. Not as appetizing. So I would go two, four, three, one for this class of steaks. All right. And the next one, this is going to be our last one practicing together. Hit pause and we'll see how you do. All right. I would place this class of steaks two, three, four, one. Two is at the top of the class again because look how much red meat we have available here. And there's still nice pockets of marbling. Okay. Then I would go three at the second pair or the second um, stake in the class because there's a little bit more fat. It's not as trim along the sides as uh, stake number two. And there's also a lot more boniness, right? You see that in there. So it's going to be a lot more bone, which means less red meat for us to enjoy. I would then go four because there's a little bit less marbling and a lot more fat along the sides than even with steak number three. But four still obviously places above one because one, look at how much how much meat is lacking on steak number one. It's very minimal meat compared to the other steaks in this class. And we also have a lot of fat tissue surrounding the outsides of the steak, which is going to make kind of hard to chew and not as palatable and enjoyable when we eat it. Therefore, I place this class two, three, four, one. Okay. So all I want you to do here is look at these four steaks and rank them from best to worst, just like we did here. Kind of think of it like which steak number would I naturally want to put in my grocery cart, grocery cart first, um, and then which one would go second, third, and fourth. So kind of Think of it that way. You don't have to give me an explanation. Just give me, if you think it's one, two, three, four, then write one, two, three, four in the Google um, Classroom or Canvas, whichever one your class is using. Um, 
Hopefully you found this to be very fun and exciting. I love looking at um, steaks. I love eating steaks. I love grilling steaks. However, um, this is going to be really cool for you to know, especially if you get into a fight with mom or dad or a sibling or maybe somewhere down the road with your wife or with your husband about which steak to buy. You now have the knowledge and skills you need to purchase and make the best informed decision about which steak is going to give you the juiciest, most tender and best um meat for your plate uh, for dinner. So I would encourage you to continue to keep this skill in your back pocket, maybe test it out at the grocery store this week. Um, and like I said, go ahead, rank these from best to worst and put them in Google Classroom. Have a great rest of your week. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in.